read the information about sure. our online meetings? Uh, tonight's meeting is web Zoominar format. With that, there are two ways to contact or to be able to speak um, or have your public, uh, to have the public announce. One is to send an email to pwcomment at burlingame.org uh, or public comment at burlingame.org. You can send an email and with that email, uh, myself or Ms. Brewer will read it and uh, we'll keep it within three minutes. And the second way is to use the raise your hand feature in the Zoom. And with that, we will uh, open up, let you speak. And that again will be for uh, three, approximately three minutes. So with that, thank you, Vice Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Wong. And we'll begin with our Pledge of Allegiance. How about our newest commissioner, Commissioner Ng? Would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Ng. Ms. Brewer, can we proceed with the roll call, please? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Commissioner Ng? Yes. Commissioner Rebellos? Here. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Israelit? Here. The Vice Chair Martos? Here. All right. Item four is our approval of minutes. We had two months of minutes to approve. Let's go with the October 14th minutes. Were there any corrections to the minutes? I'm seeing head shaking no. Okay, and then can I have a motion to approve the minutes from October 14th? I move to approve. I second. second. Okay. Motion to move to approve by Commissioner Bellos, seconded by Commissioner Lee. Uh, Ms. Brewer, can we have a roll call vote, please? Through the chair or vice chair, I yes. believe uh, Commissioner Israel. Ah, all right. I wasn't paying attention to the monitor. Thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Israel. All right. Ms. Brewer, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Ng. Uh, Commissioner Rebellos? Aye. Commissioner Lee? Abstain. Commissioner Israel? Approve. This is to approve the minutes? Correct. For October, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Martos? Aye. And uh, Ms. Brewer, I think because Commissioner Ng was not on the commission, he must abstain. Correct. He was not part of that October meeting. Sorry, Commissioner Ng. And that's like November November meeting as well. Um, but we still have a majority. So the motion carries three, zero, two. All right. Uh, November 10th meeting minutes. Were there any corrections to the November 10th meeting minutes? I see new. No. All right, then uh, can I ask for a motion to approve? I move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Rebels. Commissioner Second. Lee. All right, thank you. Motion to approve by Commissioner Rebelos, seconded by Commissioner Lee this time. Ms. Brewer, can we have a roll call vote, please? So did you not want me to, to call out uh, Commissioner Ng? He has to abstain. He was not at the November meeting. Okay. So Commissioner Ng. I abstain. Commissioner Rebelos? <laughs> Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Commissioner Commissioner Israelit? Aye. Vice Chair Martos. Aye. All right, motion passes 401. Thank you. We'll move on to item five, public comments. I see two people in the audience. Okay, so let me read this. 
Members of the public may speak on any item not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to suggest an item for future commission agenda may do so during the public comment period. The Ralph M. Brown Act, the state local agency open meeting law prohibits the commission from acting on any matter that is not on the agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes each and the commission chair may adjust the time limit in light of the number of anticipated speakers. We have two in the audience. Uh, Ms. Brewer, does anybody wish to comment at this time? I do not see any hands raised and there are no emails in the public comment inbox. Okay, makes that easy. All right, then I will close public comments and we'll move on to item 6A, the community BPAC update. This is an informational item only. Do we have anybody from BPAC that wants to address the commission? I see a hand. And it looks like Ms. Beatty. All yeah. Right. Hello. Hi, hi guys. So I, uh, I wanted to give the BPAC update and I also wanted to take the opportunity to thank Howard for his service. I don't know if he's here tonight, but um, he did uh, such a good job both on TSPC, but also as a BPAC member and uh, we're definitely gonna miss his voice on uh, all of these important matters that you guys talk about. So I didn't wanna let the moment pass without saying thank you to him um, and also Welcome to uh, Commissioner Ng. So we had our, our last BPAC meeting of the year. Um, we spent it a little bit in reflection um, and we're reminded of the fact that the bike ped uh, master plan has now been adopted for a full year. Um, and uh, so, you know, tw 12 months after we adopted it and we have some projects in the works, um, but uh, we, we're reflecting that we're not sure how much it has changed uh, the way the city is thinking about um, design and uh, thinking about accommodating bikes and pedestrians. Um, and that's a topic that we're gonna wanna take up um, a lot in the next year um, where we've got a lot of important projects in the mix, but also um, for uh, just the everyday improvements that we're doing around the city to make sure that we're making it walkable and bikeable for folks. Um, I would say as a, as a person who's out in Burlingame a lot on my bike and on foot, my experience is that it's getting much scarier to be a pedestrian and a cyclist in the city. And I think it's important to call that out. Um, people are driving at increasing rates of speed. Um, people are not stopping at stop signs. Uh, so the kind of the rules of the road are breaking down a little bit or have broken down a little bit in the pandemic. And I think that it's worthwhile um, for everyone to really get out of their homes and walk around and, and experience this if you haven't. Um, because I think, um, you know, we are, we're increasingly people are at risk um, of being hit by cars or being in collisions themselves when they're in cars. Um, and we, uh, we should um, consider that as we move forward, um, you know, that we are out there and, and our kids are out there walking and biking to school. Uh, so just um, as we head into the new year, I, I think we're feeling a little bit of an increased sense of urgency um, to make sure that the city um, is, is safe uh, and friendly for folks to move around. Uh, and so we're gearing up for 2022 um, and we will be back. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beatty. Were there any uh, questions from Ms. Beatty? We can't really discuss this, but I think questions or anything anybody want to ask Ms. Beatty? All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we appreciate your feedback as always. All right. We have one discussion item here, and that's item 6B, which is the Broadway Pedestrian Street Lighting Improvement Project update. Mr. Wong, I think you have a short presentation for us tonight? We do. Um, All right. Thank you, Vice Chair Martos. Evening commissioners, let me call it up. Uh, this, oops, I think I will need the, the host, need, or uh, Ms. Brewer, if she could allow me to share screen. Uh, 
Um, well, tonight, uh, the Broadway Street Lighting, uh, Commissioner Lee uh, had some questions. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to give you an update on the project and, and a refresher of uh, where we were on this project or where we've been, which would be good for uh, Commissioner Lee and Commissioner Revelo since they weren't uh, they weren't on the commission back when we first got this project. So once again, we've got the Broadway pedestrian street lighting project. So back in 2016, uh, we submitted an application for a one Bay Area grant. Uh, actually, we submitted three applications with this one. It was my predecessor and myself uh, who submitted these. So it was a few years ago for three projects. One was the uh, Hoover pedestrian improvements. Another was our federal resurfacing project where we got additional funds to, in addition to our, uh, our, our regular city sponsored program. And the last one was the, the uh, Broadway pedestrian street lighting project. Uh, as you know, two of the three have been completed and this is the last one of this, of these federal projects. This project was to remove and replace the existing street lights along Broadway. Uh, with that, it entails the uh, new conduits for some of the new installations, pull new wiring, and obviously to repair the uh, any asphalt or concrete that was needed to be opened up as part of that. Uh, the goal of this was to, we had just completed the Broadway overcrossing project and it was to bring those lights, those decorative lights, kind of all the way through the Broadway corridor. So that's where the, the idea of this came about back in 2016. Uh, we just recently, or, in August, the project was awarded to Bay Area Lightworks and they have begun work. And this next slide, I believe I forwarded this to you earlier on. It's showing the standard that's out there that will be installed out there. It's a 16 foot tall pedestrian scale lighting. It's double, it's got two luminaires on each side. Uh, and right now there are 22 locations on Broadway between El Camino and California. We are replacing all 22 of those fixture or those uh, standards, and we'll be adding 20 new uh, poles, 16 from El Camino to Cal uh, California along Broadway. So it's almost doubling the number of poles that are on Broadway. And then there are four more just to fill in between Broadway and Rollins. Uh, again, these streetlights are to match the existing style that's on the Broadway interchange, and. Um, a number of years ago, the city did upgrade all our light fixtures to LED. However, the ones on Broadway, those were first generation LEDs. And obviously the technology has come way, way uh, has definitely improved since then. So these are the latest generation. So that there's the ability for, they'll be brighter, more efficient, things like that. Now I'll give you an idea. This is the photometric. So what you see on the top, row are, and I'll zoom in to some of it, uh, th that was the existing lighting. Those are foot candles. And then below is what's designed with the new, with not only the improved lights, but also the additional lights. Let me do this. Let's see if I can scroll. So as you can see, let's just look up here along, I believe it was El Camino to the left. So the first street over, we're at uh, Cappuccino. And if you look uh, along Cappuccino across Broadway, we were in the ones, which is adequate lighting. Uh, and then here we're, we're a little light, everything's under one foot candle. Over here, we're a little over one foot candle on the north side of uh, Broadway across Cappuccino and again crossing the eastern approach there everything everything's pretty much below two but they're in the ones as you can see when we scroll down now across Cappuccino we're at 8 11 significantly higher we're reasonably we're still about the same here but across Cappuccino on the southern approach again we're we're over two we're over three and again, on this uh, Eastern approach, everything's above two, closer, everything's above three. So we are definitely improving the street light, the brightness along the corridor. Uh, give you a little bit more, the schedule. Uh, 
December 21, as of now, all the poll foundations, oops, all the poll foundations have been installed. And as the contractors working and city staff were working with the businesses and Mr. Kavarian, the uh, Broadway bid president, uh, the work has ceased during the holiday operation. So we're not gonna have torn up any, they're covered with uh, cones, the areas where, they, where we've got the pole installations or foundations, but uh, no, no work's being done. And so everything else should be being cleaned up if there's any A-frames out there or any uh, pylons, cones where they shouldn't be. So as you can guess, with everything that's going on, the, the poles are a long lead item. And so we're, we, we're not expecting those poles to arrive until March. And once they arrive, we anticipate them being installed in April along with the wiring and fixtures. And then come May, weather permitting, all the work will be completed. So with that, I will take any questions you may have. Let me see if I can open it back up. So that ends the presentation. And I can take questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Wong. Let's see. Commissioners, any, well, let's, let's see. Let's go to public. Is there any questions from the public and then we'll go to the commissioners. See nothing from the public. How about commissioners? Any questions from Mr. Wong from our commissioners? Yes. All right. Commissioner Lee, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you. So last March 11th at our meeting, I had requested to see the light plans and they didn't come. So I asked again, and I'm on along with Commissioner Israel at on the Broadway Transportation Subcommittee. So on April 8th of 2021, I put in a second request during our meeting to see the project plans. Um, and I also want to know when the council would see the plans and ask to be CC'd on it. And that was then my second request for, to see the plans. Then on May 13th, um, we talked about it again and Mr. Wong confirmed that staff would look to see, um, oh, I'm sorry. Here I have it. That there would, um, photometric study would be done and Mr. Wong stated you would forward the plans to Teaspoon. And we never got plans. Um, so we never knew that you were putting in new poles that were along the middle of the sidewalk down Broadway between California, Caroline and Rollins. The pole bases are now right down the middle of the sidewalk. So you have to walk three feet to the left or three feet to the right of the sidewalk to get around the new poles, kind of like an obstacle course. Um, pedestrians, for their comfort, far to, by far prefer to have a barrier between them and the amount of quantity and the speed of the traffic along Broadway. So they're, they are now being kind of forced to walk right along the curb if they choose to. So I would say I'm very disappointed that we were not given the plans and able to comment on the location of the new poles because these being placed smack dab in the middle. Like, did anyone look at the uh, photos that were sent in your email? Um, they were sent in your emails um, with the photos of the poles right in the middle of the sidewalk on Broadway. That is far less than ideal. The other thing I noticed if we could go back um, and it said, you know, I was under the impression that the street lights would be replacing the existing ones, but then there'd be some new ones. And it was the new ones that we really wanted to see the location of so that things like not having poles down the middle of a sidewalk, like right down the middle, you know, just 50, 50. <laughs> um, anyway, could we also go back to the light study, please? Let's just go look at that cappuccino corner again. So let's look at cappuccino corner. Thank you. Yeah, that helps. So at the cappuccino corner, what I'm seeing on Broadway, 
Like if you're trying to cross Broadway at Cappuccino, you're going into a 0.7 zone we, with the new plans. Like right in the middle of the street, it's 0.7. Yes, that one by the little hand. Thank you for doing that. Um, whereas where pedestrians cross streets, that should be brighter illuminated than, for example, underneath the R in Broadway, that's 3.7. There's a 4.2 underneath the letter B in the word Broadway. Um, so we just can't have it that we have um, the crosswalks not being illuminated brighter than the middle of the roadway where people aren't crossing. The crosswalks and the humans need to be lit up much brighter. And here we are making throwing really good money, very pretty light fixtures. And that's great that they're 16 feet tall because that is a much more pedestrian friendly light. But the location, and I'm not pleased that we aren't at four lights at all four, but about the rest of the roadway, but all four of those crosswalks where they touch the corners should all have lights so that the crosswalk area no matter what direction people walk, are the brightest thing on the road. And the middle of the street where no one's crossing, let that be the low numbers. Um, but I see like a 4.2 over there in the middle of the roadway where there's no one crossing. So I'm very disappointed about how this was designed. And then I would like to hear staff talk about the street lights that are in the middle of, of the sidewalk. Would you put them in the middle of a road? but now they're in the middle of the sidewalk on, on Broadway where a lot of people walk right by train station. And why didn't we get the plans, Mr. Wong? When we asked March 11th, I asked for the plans. So, Commissioner Lee, Commissioner Lee, let me interrupt. Don't interrogate Mr. Wong. You're welcome to ask questions about the work, but don't interrogate staff. All right, Mr. Wong, you're welcome to respond if you'd like. Through the vice chair, no. Um, and maybe it's my, uh, misunderstanding. We provided the standard to you because I think we also mentioned that obviously staff and or their design team were the designers on these projects and so we can lay it out. The reason for some of those pole locations is are their utilities along uh, the sidewalk and these new foundations they're going to interfere with those utilities and so that would have a huge impact on the project because the project and, and these grants do not cover re utility relocation. So it was a compromise in order to, I mean, it was a compromise of the access to it versus increasing the light levels along Broadway. Uh, the locations of some of those, if you look, there's also, and I'm not sure why it shows a little blank spot, but it's also, there's planner areas in some of those. So th to install some of the lights where you see on those photometrics wouldn't be possible. The lights can be maybe tweaked a little bit, but again, it's where you have to space it because you don't want to put two lights right next to each other either. So it was that balance. But um, again, uh, maybe a misunderstanding. I thought by providing you the cut sheet, that's what you were interested in, that they were going to be pedestrian scale lights. I believe that's, I thought that's what you're after. So. Thank you, Mr. Wong. I think when I said plans, I meant the plans. See the plans. Um, so that we wouldn't have them in the middle of a sidewalk. Right. And uh, the explanation to that is, again, the underground utilities there, again, putting a foundation, these are, I'll, I, I won't guess how, how deep, but they're at least over three feet deep. And there are some utilities there. And again, whether it's sewer, electrical gas, that would need to be relocated. That would have, that, that, that would make this project much more than it was. And again, and the funding wouldn't have covered it. That would have been a lot of city. I'm, I'm very disappointed in the way it's being designed. I'll, I'd like that in the minutes, please. It's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. You mentioned thank it a few you. times. Anything else, Commissioner Lee? Not right now, thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, any other commissioners want to comment on the project or have questions about the project? So I see uh, uh, Commissioner Israelite. Go ahead, you have the floor. Um, thank you. 
Mr. Wong, I, I guess, you know, I don't know about lighting or the, the technical specifications of the lights, but is there a reason why it's darker in like, for instance, the one cross section of Cappuccino and Broadway that you showed? Could you have the lights? I see that you've put them kitty corner to one another so that, you know, you would think that would give you the best possible lighting for that central intersection. And, um, but and yet it's much brighter farther up. Is it is that because there were actually more lights close together that 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 happened? And is there a way to fix that at all? And it, it's again, it's potentially a spacing thing. But again, these are pedestrian scale lighting. That's why if you look along the walkways where the emphasis was, that's where it's, it's brighter. If we yeah, we put a larger light up higher up, you're going to get those at the corner. But again, I'm, I'm also with you. I'm not the lighting specialist, but just know just enough to get myself in trouble more likely. So the goal was to light the sidewalk for pedestrians and not necessarily to light the road like a highway light would. Definitely. That's the case. And if you look along the, um, uh, the intersections, most of them are brighter than they are now where you are we're improving them. Um, that, that's what I can say about that. Uh, you know, we've been working with the Broadway businesses, Mr. Kavarian, and, you know, yeah, the location doesn't see, they haven't heard it. They, I haven't got any comments from them on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it, I think, and part of it is just, it's the balance of increased pedestrian lighting and pedestrian safety and the locations. Obviously, yeah, maybe they could have been pushed more to the corner, but that's also right where the, in the curve phase is where a lot of utilities lie. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Lee. Commissioner Rebelos, you have the floor. Hi, thanks. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, this new lighting on Broadway. Broadway is one of my favorite uh, strips of Burlingame. I go there a lot. I, I'm, I'm curious about, you know, I, 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 I appreciate uh, this discussion and, and, and I really thought this was really, a, you know, again, once again, I'm saying it again. Here we are, we're having a meeting in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I thought this was gonna be a quick meeting, an easy one. It's turning out to be more complicated. And it just keeps making me think about my work in the private sector. Communication, transparency, get everything out there ahead of the problem. It's so important, just communicate. And I'm just gonna leave that there sitting on the table. Um, but I, I only have one question about this specific project, which is, is there a potential that uh, this supply chain issue will delay the implementation, the full implementation of this project? And that's my only question, thank you. Through the vice chair. Yep, go ahead. I, I, do, I, do, I know the polls have been ordered, so I haven't heard of any supply chain issues. I, although I know some of the uh, fixtures that they have, whether it be fittings, things like that, uh, are more, a little more costly. But other than that, uh, it shouldn't. And I haven't heard from uh, the project manager of anything to that. To that. Commissioner Ng, did you have any comments or questions? Uh, just a really brief question. Uh, Mr. Wang, you mentioned that there were some adjustments that could be made to some degree on the lights themselves. Um, to what extent would that carry uh, or how would it change the uh, kind of the other report that you just showed us? It may be we can see if we can increase the fixtures, the other ones I respect for these lights. Uh, again, I'm sorry. And some of it's like if you when you have the highway lighting, it's it's more directional. You can focus those. These the pedestrian scale, they're 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 or they're 360, so the light's already going around. Um, I'll have to see what what you know. I'll, I'll try to work with the project manager to see if there's anything we can do to tweak out some of those uh, locations. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner. And, uh, Mr. Wong, I had a couple of questions. Um, I was wondering, so you showed us a section from El Camino to Cappuccino. Is, can we assume that it's similar for the rest of Broadway? The elimination is roughly the same? Yeah, but, roughly. Again, if you look at like along the sidewalks, it's probably brighter at some of the crosswalks. I mean, at the intersections, it's better than it is currently to something like extent. But uh, yeah, I just it, it was how much I could fit on there and OK, we'll blow up. OK, and then um, the intensity of the light varied quite a bit. Uh, is there tree trimming that could be done to improve the amount of light on the sidewalks or other areas? I don't know how much the trees interfere with the lights. And again, I'll, I'll check with the, I thought the tree trimming had been completed ahead of this, but I'll confirm that. I mean, it'll help, it'll help a little bit, but obviously there are some trees that you, I mean, it's just gonna be a annual problem, obviously, right? We're gonna trim up, sure. they'll grow up, so. Okay. Okay, and then uh, you mentioned Mr. Kavranian, president of the downtown or the, the Broadway uh, business district. Uh, so he was in favor of the, the design and the layout. And, and do you know if he solicited this to uh, the other merchants on Broadway? Was it uh, like a majority or uh, so? What can you tell us about that? No, obviously, Commissioner Lee has seen the pole foundations that are out there is uh, where her comment probably originated from, I'm guessing. And so I met with Mr. Ar I was I was doing some other work in the area. I met Ms. popped in my head into Mr. Kavarian's business and just chatted with him about how the project was going. He was quite happy. He didn't mention that any of the locations and obviously he's boots on the ground out there. So he's he, yeah, he was happy with the way it's coming along. And uh, he looks forward to when they're when they're fully operational. Okay. All right. Um, I I don't have any further questions or any go backs. Any other commissioners want to make a comment? Yes, Commissioner Lee, go ahead. Thank you. So yes, it would be great if you could try to tweak the lights at the actual whether they're the high freeway lights way up high or the lower pedestrian lights at the intersection so that it is brightest at the intersection so that the crosswalks get more illumination than say the middle of the roadway where there aren't any people who will likely get hit. Um, so if you could look into that, that would be very helpful. And going back to Commissioner Rebelos's comment, it'd be very helpful if communication was improved and it was much more transparent. And when, you know, the subcommittee asked for plans on a project that's in the works, and we've been asking, you know, since March that we would like to see the actual plans. And if you could work toward that openness, that would be very helpful. Um, and then the other thing is, this computer is gonna die. I'm gonna have to sign out and switch to the other computer, which doesn't have as good a sound, but I'll come back. <laughs> All right, no problem. All right. All right, are there any other comments? If not, seeing none, I will close item 6B. Uh, wait, I will not close item 6B. <laughs> Commissioner Revelos, go ahead. One more, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I just want to add, and it's, it's a little bit of a tangent. I've been walking around um, Burlingame a lot, of course. And one thing I have noticed is since the time change, it has become a lot more uh, intimidating to walk. And I actually considered setting up a tripod on a couple of intersections and taking video because there is clearly a risk, a heightened risk to pedestrians and bicyclists in the city along Broadway and along Burlingame Avenue. And, and I'm, not, I'm not pointing fingers. This is just a cultural problem. It's real. The, the size of a lot of vehicles coming out now is, uh, you know, to some people a concern, you have these large 
vehicles with really bad visibility and a lot of, uh, and they have basically an entertainment center inside of the vehicle. People are on phone conversations. They're having meetings. God knows what they're doing inside that vehicle. And they just are not seeing the pedestrians. And nothing has happened yet. It's going to happen. I've had so many close calls in the last 14 days just walking around Burlingame. So I think there is going to be increased pressure on us as a commission to improve lighting, to improve uh, 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 pedestrian and uh, cycling uh, uh, safety along the major corridors in Burlingame. And with the new world that we live in, I've done extensive reading and research about traffic post-COVID, which we are never going to be post-COVID, but so to speak, post-COVID, uh, people going back to the office, rush hour versus traffic all day long. We have a lot to think about. And, and I, 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 again, I apologize for going on a tangent. And I don't mean to put pressure on anybody because I don't intend to. But things like lighting, stop signs, and, and, and an avenue like Broadway and Burlingame, the, it, 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 we have to look at it with new eyes. And, and that's, I just want to say that. I want to get that on the record. And that's all I have. I'm, I thank right. you. Thank you, Commissioner Rebelos. Commissioners, let's try and stick to the agenda. Let's not go off on tangents, but I appreciate that feedback, Commissioner Rebelos. We're gonna move on to, let's see, do we have Commissioner Lee back? Not yet. While we're waiting for Commissioner Lee, why don't we, why don't we introduce our new commissioner, Commissioner Ng. Prentice Ng. Uh, why don't you unmute yourself and we'll let you start. You can tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how long you've been in Burlingame, uh, your, do you have children, um, you know, what made you interested in our commission, and then we can share likewise. Um, so I'll let, turn it over to you, Commissioner Ng, while we're waiting for Commissioner Lee to get back. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm sure I'm not going to be able to live the mute thing down for at least a couple of meetings here. So I can appreciate the, uh, the ribbing there. Uh, no, I, it's great to be involved here. Um, I, my wife and I moved to Burley game in 2010 when she was seven months pregnant. And so um, really this is, uh, we came from, uh, from uh, San Francisco before that for a few years, but you know, this is where we first set roots and uh, we have two children. I have an 11 year old daughter. Uh, who's at BIS now in the sixth grade. And I have a seven-year-old son who is a second grader at Lincoln. Um, so yeah, so we've been in Berlin Games since 2010. Um, you know, how I got involved in here, or you know, how my road led here, it's uh, it's kind of hard to say. I think, uh, you, know, you know, as you set roots and you you find ways to be more involved little by little, um, you know, it, it starts with, you know, coaching, you know, kids sports or, you know, getting involved with dad's clubs at school. And that kind of spools into like, well, you know, hey, you know, I'm involved in this committee over here, you know, would you be interested in joining? Sure, it sounds like an interesting, uh, uh, interesting way to, to be more involved and kind of spools into this too. So, uh, you know, I can say that uh, the ability to be more attached to the community certainly has, you know, kept pulling me in more and more. And um, like, you know, I, I think having to, to you know, an elementary school and a middle school child, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly thinking about, you know, their safety, how they get around, um, things that affect them in the environment. And, you know, I would say that I, I echo a lot of this, the sentiments about, you know, where we are as a society right now. And, and really, we, there's a lot of people and there's a lot of people coming through and, um, you know, we have to, we have to adjust for that. So, you know, that's, that's where I see that I can, you know, certainly be part of that solution, uh, or at least part of that conversation to help find the solution. So, you know, we're not going to solve the world's problems in one day, but, you know, little by little. Thank you, Commissioner Ng. Uh, Commissioner Rebelos, you want to tell Commissioner Ng a little bit about your background? 
<laughs> well, as the second newest commissioner <laughs> to uh, Burlingame, uh, welcome. Uh, you took the place of the first commissioner, and I appreciate it uh, today when you had to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance because I had to go through that ritual uh, <laughs> unexpectedly. Uh, so I, I and I, but I also want to, in, in, without taking anything away from Commissioner Ng, uh, I want to uh, give some respect to uh, uh, former Chair Wetton and my appreciation for him. I don't know if there's going to be time for that later in the uh, meeting, but um, I really did appreciate his service. But I, 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 not to take away again from Commissioner Ng. Very excited to work with you. I've read a little bit about your background and uh, you seem like a very, very interesting person with a very good perspective about traffic safety and parking. You seem vested in Burlingame and I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to working with you. Appreciate that, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Rebelos. Commissioner Lee, can you hear us? Do you have audio? You have audio, you can't speak. All right, then uh, Commissioner Lee, I know has been with BPAC. She's a resident in the Washington school area of, of Burlingame, I believe. She nod your head if I'm on track. All right, I'm speaking for her. <laughs> and as you can see, she studies the issues very carefully. She's done a great job and she walks and she bikes a lot around town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'll get to know her more in subsequent future meetings. All right, uh, we'll go on to Commissioner Israel. I want to tell Commissioner Ng a little bit about yourself. Hi, welcome. Um, I feel like we're playing charades, two words, first syllable. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome. I'm glad you're joining us. It's good that we have people that um, are coming from different viewpoints and different stages in their life. Um, I'm, we have subcommittees, so I'm on the school safety subcommittee and, uh, which actually Howard Wetton had been on and sounds like with, with a child at BIS and a child in elementary school, that might be a, a perfect little place for you to slide right in. Um, cause you're going to definitely be very aware of those issues. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm the second oldest now member that happened very quickly. There wasn't a whole lot of turnover and now I'm the, oh, excuse me, second most senior, sorry, <laughs> vice chair Martos. <laughs> and, um, but you know, you'll hear, it'll take you a little while to get up to speed. There's a lot of acronyms and a lot of things that, that I'm, I remember thinking what I would make a list, like, what the heck is that? So um, please do stop us. Um, and it's okay to say like, what is BPAC? Um, and we can just tell you real quickly and learning curve is quick and steep, but you'll welcome. I think you'll do a great job. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. And Commissioner Ng, you and I spoke on the phone for about 40 minutes. I, I really enjoyed our conversation. I think you know about me. I've been on the commission now for 11 years. I've been chair twice. I had the privilege of working with Commissioner Wetton, former Chair Wetton, for my entire tenure on, on Teaspoon. And uh, I've seen a lot of good things done by this commission. Uh, I look forward to this set of commissioners doing just as many great things in the future. There's a lot of things out on the horizon that um, you know, are going to challenge us. Uh, and I like the minds and the discussions that we have. I think that uh, we're going to do some good things for the city and, and do the very best that we can to improve traffic, safety, and parking citywide. So welcome. And I think you're going to enjoy this commission. All right. Well, speaking of commissioners, we're on to item 6C, which is chair and vice chair nominations. Um, the, our bylaws say that a, the nomination of the chairperson should be first, uh, and then we'll move on to the vice chair nominations. So I wanna open to the floor, any nominations for chair? Commissioner Israelitz. 
I nominate Vice Chair Martos for chair for next year. We've often, um, it's sort of been the tradition that the vice chair uh, becomes the chair the following year, although I, I understand it's not written in stone, but um, I think Vice Chair Martos has a lot of experience and, and can sort of lead us through this since there are so many of us that are new. All right, well, thank you for that. I will accept that nomination. Are there any other nominations for chair? Seeing none. All right. Well, I think we should go to a roll call vote. Ms. Brewer, can you do a roll call vote? So the, the recommendation is Vice Chair Martos <laughs> be nominated and for chair. Uh, Ms. Brewer, do a roll call vote. Commissioner Ng. Uh, Vice Chair Martos. Commissioner Rebello. Aye. Commissioner Lee. I think, was that an aye? Was that thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> okay. I think that is an aye. <laughs> Commissioner Israelit. Aye. And Vice Chair Martos. Uh, I guess I can vote for myself. I, <laughs> since I accept it, I have to vote for myself. All right. <laughs> Thank you, commissioners, for your confidence. And I appreciate it very much. I'm looking forward to, to working with you all and Mr. Wong and, and our new mayor. Uh, one of the things that I did in previous years when I was chair was I did meet with the mayor periodically, usually every, every third month. We tried to do it quarterly. Uh, to see what council is interested in as far as traffic safety and parking. And if they had any hot buttons or if they had feedback from the public on different things that we may not be aware of. So I plan on continuing that. Um, and we'll see, you never know, the, the council may wanna meet with us on a separate side special meeting. Uh, but uh, that's something that you can look forward to. Hopefully I can provide some of that flow down from the council and, and the mayor uh, in the future. All right, the next office that we need to vote on is vice chair. And so um, uh, can I turn it back to Commissioner Israelit? Would you accept the nomination as vice chair? And we can have more than one candidate, but Commissioner Israelit, what do you think about being vice chair? I would be happy to be vice chair. All right, any of the, okay. Um, others, Commissioner Lee, Commissioner Rebellos, you, uh, do either of you want to nominate for vice chair? Um, see, nothing. Okay, then I will close nominations. We have one candidate, Commissioner Israelit. Commissioner, uh, let's see. Ms. Brewer, can we have a roll call vote, please? The motion on the floor is that Commissioner Israelit will be the new vice chair. Um, can we have a roll call vote, Ms. Brewer, please? Commissioner Ng? Aye. Commissioner Rebello. Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye, if you can hear me. I heard you. <laughs> I guess I can vote for myself. Aye. <laughs> and Vice Chair Martos. Aye. And I see Mr. Wong had his hand up. Did you have your hand up, Mr. Wong? No. Okay. Okay. Maybe he was he was gonna blackball me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we you have the, the two most senior members of this commission to be the leaders for 2022. Mr. Wong, I see your hand up again. Now my hand is up. Now I, you want to say something. I, I didn't want right. to interject prior to that. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go on mute. Go ahead, Mr. Wong. And uh, I just wanted to point out that because this in my time here, uh, we haven't had three, we'll call freshmen or relatively uh, new 
commissioners all in there. Usually there's been, you know, just it cycles in one at a time. It seems to have happened. But uh, Commissioner Ng brought this up of, and there, there previously has been a manual and I've also kept that from Commissioner Israel. There was one, we were trying to update it. However, in now our industry is, uh, there have been lots of changes and they're happening a little quicker. And so the, the manual that Commissioner Martos has isn't current. But what we plan to do is, um, and I will schedule this when our, uh, our deputy city attorney returns, we'll have a refresher course for the Brown Act. And we can kind of talk about, go over that for everyone. You can ask questions. Uh, we'll try to schedule, I'll contact each, each of you once he's back, he's, he's on leave right now. And then we will try to get together that way. There's always questions that come up about that. And during that, we'll also go, go through process of what the chair, vice chair will kind of just lay out that for everyone. In addition, I'll, uh, even if we don't have copies to provide you, we'll give you the links of the things that we use, like the California Manual Uniform Traffic Control Devices, the NACDO, uh, some of the Caltrans references, things like that, just so you have and you can look at, as well as our own documents, like uh, any of the specific plans which you can find online, or most importantly for this group, our bike ped master plan. So we will try to at least give you the listing of that so you guys have at least the resource, maybe not a nice, really sweet binder like Commissioner Martos has, but uh, you'll, you'll have something. Thank um, you, Mr. Wong. Go great. ahead. I was just gonna say that would be great to have, you know, just uh, the guidelines. All right. Anything else on any of the, let's see. Okay, item six C is done. All right, so we'll, we'll move on and um, we'll move on to item seven A, the engineering division reports. Mr. Wong, you have a report for us. Yes, thank you, Chair. Now, Chair Martos, uh, it's a quick one. We've covered a lot this year. I mean, between multiple bike pet projects that we've got out there, ones that are coming, streetscapes. So the last couple things, the Highland parking garage, it's, it's open. Uh, and I've just, I took a look at it again recently. And again, we're still uh, the first two level, first level is definitely full. The second level kind of, where there's still over 200 spaces that are open. Uh, the director has uh, wanted me to try to do some additional signage. So we're looking forward to that. And we'll try to do some more outreach to the businesses but we will try to do some other efforts to fill that garage. And I imagine uh, in talking Chair Martos that we will probably uh, talk about it in this com uh, committee at some point after we'll try some of our efforts. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, I have one. Okay. Good. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Um, yep. And I don't know if it's my computer, my phone that has my volume. But um, I was thinking, what about making the upper levels free? Like maybe January, February, make them free so people start to get used to using it. And I, I was hoping going forward next holiday shopping season, we do some free parking around town um, to help our merchants. But I was thinking for the parking garage, maybe they have it free, we could put that in the e-news that level three for, through five are free, like month of January, February or something. Can yeah, so let, let, let me come, no, that, that's a good idea. And, you know, I, I do want to see as part of the downtown parking committee, uh, I, the other commissioner, Wedden was part of that committee as well. Um, we do want to investigate how we can get more people using the garage. Uh, certainly free is a big incentive, um, but those are things that we can discuss, Commissioner Lee. Next January, we're gonna talk about the committees and representation on those committees. And we will need one other person, one other commissioner on the committee. Um, so those are all good points and uh, we can discuss those things next year and bring those uh, recommendations to the commission uh, to try and increase parking in the garage and open up more space in the 
downtown core area. So those are all, all good things. Yes, Mr. Wong, I see your hand up. Yes, through the chair. I, I didn't want to get too much, I won't get into too much of the weeds, but initially before the garage was open, just to give you a little background, we did have free parking because the uh, pay stations weren't quite operating. So we, we did, there were folks using it. We had folks, it, it filled it up. And then we, it's also a long-term garage. And so, and also we got some uh, feedback from some of the merchants that had already purchased uh, their parking permits. And it was kind of unfair for them that they purchased it and then other folks are able to park for free. So we've got to balance that. Uh, and that made it tough. So it's a good recommendation and something we can look, look at, but we'd have to do it wholesale and not isolate because those people have been, they, they pay their, their parking permit fees and yeah, just to be fair to them. Yep. Commissioner Rebelos, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, I mean, um, I've often wondered about a valet parking program for the merchants. Uh, and maybe I went in and looked at that garage and I parked in it uh, a couple of times. Uh, and I, you know, I love it. I mean, I, I love parking there. I love the ease of it. Uh, and it just, it's, it's occurred to me that you know, the only valet parking program that I'm aware of that existed in Burlingame prior to COVID was at Ilford Isle, and they have a valet parking zone. As far as I know, that valet parking program at Ilford Isle is not active right now. I don't know why. Um, but uh, just in a general valet parking program for that you know downtown area seems to me that uh it, it could actually accomplish a couple of things uh one of them is uh you you don't have the cars circulating uh and creating a, a risk for pedestrians and bicyclists and and two it, it, it could uh, be a revenue driver for the city All right. Um, <laughs> I can see this is going to be a good discussion topic next year. Mr. Wong, uh, why don't you make one last comment? Then I'll, I, I want to table this. I, I really don't want to continue on with this. So it's not agenda. No, just, go ahead. Just wanted to give a background. We did have a second valet program just prior, before uh, the garage went offline. That was one of the suggestions by the uh, downtown parking committee. We had a valet program to help fill the lots once the God, I can't lot and lot of, oh, goodness, I cannot remember. But the parking lot before the parking structure was there. Once it went down, we we lost all those spaces. So there was immediate concern from especially this commission what we were going to do. And so what was enacted was a valet program that allowed us to stack vehicles in aisles. And with that, uh, and then the pandemic came, and then they we no longer needed that program because no one was coming downtown. And that was, I believe the city paid, paid out front. There was no cost to the, uh, uh, the user. Uh, it's something we can explore with the parking garage, but again, that's, that's, uh, that, that's a good idea, but just give you a, his, a little history. We have tried a program like that. And, and, some, and even when it was there, we might fill the parking lot, but there were some days, it just depends on the day of the week that it's totally effective. And then some days it's like those poor guys are out there just whistling Dixie. <laughs> All right. Um, good topic for discussion next year for the downtown parking committee as well. Um, Mr. Wong, the rest of your report. Sorry. That's and the, okay. the, the last item on this one is the uh, Transportation Development Act or TDA Article 3 application. We was submitted. And that was one of the last things. Ms. Mai wanted to make sure she got in. Uh, again, for the new commissioner, Commissioner Ng. Um, this is a, a grant program sponsored by the SeaCag, uh, uh, and it the application we put in would be improved bicycle facilities along Truesdale, uh, Merchardson, as well as Davis. 
Uh, and the one that we feel we like this one is because uh, we feel strong about this application is uh, for the Murchison, which we share the right of way with the city of Millbrae. We are working with them to not only extend the facility they have on their side, uh, all, uh, we're trying to get as close to Mill School as we can. So we, we can mimic, we'll mirror, try to mirror and work together with them for uh, both sides of the street. So, and they provide a letter of support. So that's why we think this will make our application just a little stronger with two jurisdictions working together. So with that, uh, that is it for this month. So thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Sergeant Perna, Police Department reports. Nice feedback. I don't know who that is. Sergeant Perna, can you come off mute? Sergeant Perna is still with us. Three ones on mute. I see him there. And he is unmuted. But I'm hearing quite a feedback. Yeah. Everybody go on mute, on mute for a minute. Though. Yeah, Everyone except was for on mute. Sergeant. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yeah, we yes. have you now. You? Yep. Very good. I changed microphones um, on the computer, so I think it's good now. Give me a second. Okay, right. you can see me, you can hear me? We can see you, we can hear you. Sorry about that. Um, so the, are we, are, did you wanna bring up the, um, the collision report, if we're able to do that? Yeah, please. Uh, let's see, Ms. Brewer, can you bring that up? Yeah, give me a minute and I'll have it up. Okay, okay. so um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if any of you had a chance to look at it ahead of time, but there were uh, three vehicle pedestrian collisions this month documented. Um, I'll talk about the one, there was one at uh, El Camino and Ray um, on the 20th at 8.34 p.m. Uh, that one was a little strange. Um, that was a, a pedestrian that had sort of wandered into the road, like nowhere near a um, crosswalk or anything like that. So uh, in, in that case, unfortunately, the pedestrian was at fault. Uh, no one was cited in that case, of course, because um, we don't do that. Um, the one here at uh, Cabrillo, Cabrillo and Easton, um, the pedestrian was walking, or the vehicle was southbound on Cabrillo and the uh, pedestrian was crossing in the crosswalk. Vehicle failed to come to a complete stop at the stop sign for the pedestrian that was um, already in the crosswalk. Just didn't see the pedestrian, unfortunately. Uh, it was a minor injury collision. And um, the one at Lorton and Howard, let me pull up the details of that, I'm sorry. Let's see, 3049. So yeah, this one was, uh, again, a vehicle, uh, a pedestrian in a crosswalk um, vehicle. Uh, just want to make sure I had the direction right. They were crossing uh, Howard uh, from the southeast to the northeast curb. Um, and again, vehicle didn't see the... Uh, didn't see the, the pedestrian in the in the uh, roadway. Um, I do think that there is um, what Commissioner Reblos was talking about. I, I think I brought this up before, but I think there is a visibility issue in, in uh, today's vehicles. Um, I, like I said, I think the increased pillar size when you're making either a left turn or even a right turn, if there's a pedestrian in that crosswalk, I think it's very difficult to see. And I think if the motorist is, is distracted in any way, whether it even be, you know, by a radio or hopefully not a cell phone or anything, but anything at all, it could be very difficult for them to not see um, a pedestrian in the roadway. And, uh, you know, we do also support um, anything that could be done to, to you know, light up any type of, um, uh, you know, crosswalks, intersections, anything like that. Anything that could increase pedestrian visibility would be a good thing. Uh, did anyone have any questions about any of the other collisions that are listed? I know there were, it looks like there were four on El Camino. Uh, that was a little unusual. Two of them did occur at Ray. 
Um, I think the other one that occurred at Ray was actually a tree branch that had fallen off and landed in the road. Uh, Commissioner Lee. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. No. Yeah, so good. Yeah, it's working. So a um, couple questions. Um, at first, the Cabrillo and Easton and the Howard and Lorton, what time of day were those when the pedestrians were hit in the crosswalk? Um, Cabrillo and Easton was on the, I can't make that bigger, but it, um, let me look at mine. It was at 8.20 a.m., but I'm trying to see what day of the week it was. I think it was the 30th, uh, which would have been a, that would have been a Tuesday. At what time about? 8.20 a.m. Say the first word again. 8.08.20. Oh, okay. So like right there in the morning. Yeah, right at the busy, busy commute time, people going to school. Do we know the age of the person who did? Um, was it a youth? Was it a youth? No, I don't believe that it was. A, let me double check that for you, actually, before I comment on that. Um, right. I reviewed these, but I, I just want to make sure that um, accurate in what I'm saying. Uh, this involved a, a, a driver that was a minor, but um, the pedestrian was not a minor. The pedestrian was an adult. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then, um, of course, Lorton and Howard is always in our conversations because it is one of our top five pedestrian collision hits. Was it, is it number one or two? Do you have that chart still? Um, I don't the have the... Um, I don't have the uh, the map queued up. I could get that for you if you give me just a few minutes. Um, you know, maybe at the end of it, I can look at it and come yeah. back. But um, you mean for the year? What time was Martin and Howard? Uh, that one occurred at. Uh, it looks like around noontime, like twelve thirty-two. Yeah, twelve thirty-two p.m. on the sixth of November, which was a Monday. No, I'm sorry. It was a Saturday. Okay, so if I recall in looking at our minutes, on May 13th in our minutes, we discussed that um, staff was going to look to see if Lorton and Howard qualified for larger stop signs. Remember that, May 13th in our meeting? And then uh, Chairman Wetton said that it would be a future, future agenda item to discuss stop sign improvements and it was requested by three of us commissioners to improve the Howard and Lorton intersection because it is one of our top uh, pedestrian hits and it's also one of the streets you have to cross to get to the brand new parking garage. So we, um, three of us were very interested in it. They weren't named in the minutes, which three commissioners, I'm sure I was one. <laughs> but um, anyway, has staff had a chance to look to see if Lorton and Howard qualified for larger stop signs could we put in stop signs that, um, like one on the back of the other stop sign and one on your side, so you actually have two diagonal, like Chicago does that, or you have two stop signs, one that faces you as a driver on the far left side, so that all four stop signs have stop signs on both sides, in other words. Uh, Chicago does it in lots and lots of intersections, and it's very effective. Um, could we do that? Could we put in the larger stop signs? That was on the agenda. The minutes May 13th, the staff was gonna look at it. I'm wondering, what are we doing to improve that intersection? Cause here's another hint. California and Howard, I believe is controlled by stoplights, um, not, not, uh, not stop signs. So again, this was just simply that um, there was a pedestrian in the road, you know, that, that uh, the driver didn't see. Um, and I know that- it was that like, I'm sorry, was it Lorton and Howard you said that? Um, let me double check. I'm sorry. I thought I had this as, I thought we were talking about California and Howard for some reason, but yeah, it was Lorton and Howard and that's controlled by stop signs. You're correct. Yeah. So right. the driver was eastbound Howard and the, uh, the pedestrian was northbound on Lorton crossing, crossing Howard. So the driver just basically drove right into the pedestrian who's in a crosswalk in the middle of the day. Essentially. 
Okay. Oh, and Mr. Wong, do we know what staff has been working on since May 13th on this? Sure. Through the chair. We've looked at it. I mean, again, when you use larger stop signs, it's usually a, a higher speed area in order to see it from further away. This, this isn't qualified for that. Um, as far as that, we're, again, I think we mentioned as part of one of the future projects, we're going to have that area is going to be a high visibility crosswalk. And we're looking at uh, tr trying maybe some corner pet improvements, but that, that's still out there. We will definitely make it a high visibility crosswalk. I did note uh, after our last meeting, um, there's one of the lights down the, not the corner, but one down that may contribute to it that was out. So that there's a work order in to repair that uh, light. But uh, again, this, it, this collision also occurred in the middle of the day. So lighting shouldn't have been an issue at that point. At least not the brightness, whether it's sun in someone's eyes or something like that, I, I don't know, but as far as not illuminated, that, that shouldn't have been the case here. Okay, I see Commissioner Ng, your hand is up. Go ahead. Thank you. So, I mean, kind of building off of that, you know, I don't think you could argue that it's still, the, the light was shining in the right, it's noon, it's, it's, so the sun's straight overhead, that, that wouldn't be an issue. But I think the concerning thing is it's noon on a Saturday when you're in a busy downtown area, you should know there's a lot of pedestrians in there. So the fact that, you know, yes, I understand that maybe it's not a high speed consideration, but you gotta get someone's attention on this point. I think, you know, Commissioner Rebelt's comments earlier about people are just not as aware or literally just not paying attention to what they're doing. And it's getting really dangerous. I don't think there's you know any question that you know, this is enough, this is proof of that. And so, I mean, I mean, this is not some remote area and it's dark and it's at night and something happens. I mean. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's going to make your skin crawl. If it's like in the middle of the day where everyone knows it's going to be busy and there's going to be traffic and there's going to be pedestrians. So um, you know, certainly I think brainstorming out ways to create more visibility or more awareness, you know, uh, I think is, is certainly we need to consider. Thank you, Commissioner. And Commissioner Rebelos, you had a comment, your hands up. Yes. <clears throat> I, I I concur with the the comments of uh, Commissioner Lee and Commissioner Ng, and, and, and I am just so concerned, and I've expressed it in previous meetings, I'm so concerned about, you know, we've had a number of accidents in the last, in the, what, the previous six, eight months that are just really, for lack of a better term, maybe egregious. Uh, there's an assumption that um, people know the street that they are driving on, the drivers. They know the, the, the flow of the street. They know the intersections. And there is also an assumption that um, uh, the pedestrians know. And that's becoming more and more apparent to me to not actually be true. Uh, my own experiences, I, I'm telling you again, again, I'm going on a tangent. The last two months, I've, I've gone on walks three or four times a week around the city. And I cannot count the number of times the crosswalk was violated over and over and over again. And I'm surprised that there haven't been more accidents. And when I look at uh, this how, uh, Howard and Lord at noon on a Saturday, who's out at noon on a Saturday? It's terrifying to think about it. And, and, and I want more data. The, the person, you know, the, the all the, everyone that was involved in this accident, I would love to know if they lived in Burlingame. And the reason that that's relevant is because do they know that road? And if they don't know that road, if they don't live in Burlingame, that speaks to how important it is to have the appropriate traffic controls. And if they do live in Burlingame, 
that I, frankly, it does as well. But I, I, we need to know this data. We need to know more information. We shouldn't be reacting to these horrible accidents. We should be preventing them. And, and, and I feel like there's something about Burlingame where we just, I, I don't know how to put it in a nice way. I, I feel very much like we kind of assume that everyone here is going to walk with consideration. They're going to drive with consideration. They're going to cycle with consideration. And everyone is just going to wave each other on the, wave at each other on the streets. That's not true. And that is becoming more and more apparent. And, and I, 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 you know, again, you know, I, I speak to the size of the vehicles, the visibility from the vehicles, people relying on the technology within the vehicles. The dynamic has changed. And I want us to address it in such a bad way. I really do. I'm experiencing it myself. And when me as a, a mature, you know, grown adult is scared to cross a road because someone might make a left turn and kill me, there's a big problem. There's a big problem. We need to address it. And and I just I don't know what else to do but to express that. I just don't know what else to do. It's that bad for me. And 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 I I, I just don't know what else to say. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Rebelos. Um, so, commissioners, those that are new, Commissioner Israel that went through this previously, but. The January meeting, we will have an opportunity to list all our goals and objectives for 2022. Things like what we've just discussed, safety on, on power in Morton. You know, I, I, Commissioner Lee, was one of the people that said we need to study that as well by the parking garage. Um, so we'll have an opportunity to bring up all your concerns at next month's meeting and get them prioritized for future discussions and studies in 2022. I, I hear your concern. I agree with the concerns. Um, Sergeant Perna, there was one other accident with a pedestrian that I wanted to get some information on. I didn't see it on your report, but it happened on the 29th of November at Peninsula and Stanley. Do you know about that person that was hit crossing the road there at 526 in the evening? Um, I believe that that was a San Mateo collision. Okay. If it's the one that I'm... Um, yeah, yeah, it said BPD assisted San Mateo. Right. So yes, that was a fatal, that was actually a fatal collision. A fatal collision. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe San Mateo's second... Uh, second in a, a very short time. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Um, so that could be an area that, and I spoke with Mr. Wong about this a little bit in our agenda planning meeting, um, <clears throat> whose jurisdiction that is, if we wanna make that, there, you know, there's a crosswalk there that crosses Peninsula to go to the CBS. And I'm assuming, do you know whether the person was in the crosswalk, Sergeant Perna? Um, on that collision, uh, I, I don't have the details, so I shouldn't. Okay. I, I think I recall, unfortunately, that I think the pedestrian was out out of the out of the uh, crosswalk. Okay. Um, but I I don't know for for. Okay. For All right. Um. Yeah. You know. Um. I go to Celia's right there off the peninsula regularly. And I noticed that there's now a, a beacon that flashes when you cross the street there. That was a horrible place to cross. Um, people crossing peninsula to get to CVS, 
it's just a crosswalk. And so, I mean, that could be a, a discussion topic and, and something that we could consider in 2022. How do we improve that? And, you know, it's a little tricky because part of it's San Mateo, part of it's Burling game. And, um, but still, I think, gosh, somebody lost their life there. And there's got to be something we can do better at that intersection. So, um, Commissioner Lee, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, two more questions, Sergeant Perna. Um, first, I was hoping you were able to get the collision map going while we were all chatting um, to see the overall look of the pedestrian and bicycle hits. Um, and then the other thing was, I heard that someone was hit today at Bayswater in California. Do you know what happened there? Um, I know there was a collision there today. I, I don't have any of the details, unfortunately. I mean, that'll unfortunately be in the next report. Um, but I don't, I might be able to get um, some preliminary details uh, if I if I just look and see now exactly what happened. Um, and I could probably bring up the map if you give me a second, but the problem was that I wasn't able to, it was sort of a technical issue, but I wasn't able to share, uh, share the map. So I think I would need to provide that to um, either uh, Mr. Wong or, you know, or, or staff ahead of time so they could be brought up so that we could all see it. Um, so we could, you know, I don't mean to put you off. We could try to do that uh, next time, or I could look at it and just relay the information to you if you'd like, whichever you prefer. I think it'd be great to be able to see it and then make sure you add this new pedestrian hit at Howard and Lorton. Oh, of course. Yeah. It'll yeah. Be, if I, then, when I bring it up, it'll be updated to, to current, mm -hmm. uh, current data. Okay. And I guess there was a pedestrian, the pedestrian today hit at California and Bayswater also. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. <laughs> um, thank you, Sergeant Perna. Appreciate that report. We are on to item 7C, Farmer's Market. Did not happen, although I walked through Farmer's Market. It was lovely. Um, for the new commissioners, we in the past have staffed a booth at Farmer's Market for community outreach. And uh, former Commissioner La uh, Launder was very generous in sharing his table. He's part of the uh, uh, Environmental uh, Committee. And we shared their table uh, once a month. Some of the commissioners would get there get down there and spend a couple hours uh, interacting with the public and hearing concerns and let them know that we're there uh, to help improve traffic safety and parking. We can discuss that next month if we want to restart that again and have a table down there. But for now, there's nothing to really report. So we'll move on to item 7D, which is the Chair and Commissioner Communications. So I have nothing as chair to share other than I will say, we will do a proclamation for former Chair Wetton and for all his dozen years of service to this commission. There's also a, another commissioner, Chris Bush, who left the commission, was replaced by Commissioner Lee. And we will likewise do a proclamation for him um, very early in 2022, if not the January meeting will be in the February meeting. So those will come up and I'll have an opportunity to, to thank both of them for their service to our community. Uh, other commissioners, any other uh, communications that you receive from the public or anything else that you wanna share at this time? Um, Chair. Hello, yes, Hi. I did not see you, go ahead. Um, hi. So I actually received a communication from um, to um, our teaspoon email. Um, it's Mr. Robert Smith, who lives at to the upper part of Hillside Drive. And he um, he sent me an email um, asking about Hillside Drive traffic and parking regulations. Firstly, he wanted to know if the commission deals with that even though they're in the unincorporated part of Burlingame. Um, I, and I, I wasn't sure actually what the answer was. 
Um, but his concern is he was riding his bike on Hillside Drive. And the fact that there are vehicles parked on the north slash east side of Hillside Drive creates a dangerous situation for bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, there, a car was passing by and there was nowhere for him to go other than into the street exposed to the cars that were traveling up the hill. So he says, my question is, should not parking be prohibited on the northeast side of the road for safety reasons? There is parking on the other side of the street. And he, you know, he wanted to know if this would be something that that our commission would address. Mr. Wong, unincorporated, do we address those issues? And I don't, is it unincorporated or is that county? There, it's their pockets along hillside is, uh, that are not ours. Uh, we can take a look. Do you have a, an address from? I do. I, I, I'm leery to. Sure, sure. You can public, submit but I will. I will say though, he said the specific, and then he sent me a follow-up email. He said the, the best slash worst example of the dangerous pedestrian bicycle stretch on Hillside Drive is between Hillside Circle and Newton Drive at the fire station. So that's sort of the lower um, part. Yeah, I, I know that section. So, Mr. Wong, I mean, in, in general, when I receive concerns like that, I, I thank the public and then I also either forward it to you or recommend that they contact you for follow up. Um, is that yeah, that, that's proper yeah, process yeah. For, for all our commissioners here? Um, yes, I just received this um, this afternoon, but I will forward it to you, Mr. Okay. Mr. Wong. Thank you. I don't believe I, I, usually we get some of those and I don't know why we didn't. So, but uh, please forward that one. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you. Th thanks, Commissioner Israelit. Any vice chair Israelit? Yeah. Anything else? Any other commissioners, other communications? No? Okay. Very good. Then we'll move on to 8A or actually eight, our committees. Um, so the downtown parking committee, that was 8A, that was myself and Commissioner Wetton, former Chair Wetton. Uh, we've been on this committee for quite a while, uh, actually before the parking garage was started. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a ongoing problem, downtown parking. So I'm curious now what the, with the new parking garage, how things are, have changed, could change. Um, but at this time, don't have any new information. We didn't really meet to discuss anything. Uh, I envision that that'll likely be an, a committee in 2022 staffed by people on this commission um, to continue discussions on how to improve downtown parking. Uh, Broadway parking, Commissioners Israel and Lee. Did you have any discussions last month you want to share? Go ahead, Commissioner Lee, if you have a microphone. Okay. All right. Yeah, we, Commissioner Israel and I did um, talk about the street lights that were, that were put smack down the middle of the sidewalk on Broadway. And um, I, we chatted about it while I was out there walking and sent her some photos. And um, we, we need much better communication and much better planning. Um, and we'll keep plugging away at Broadway, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. School traffic, was that a, another wetten? That was, um, I'm on that, yes, with, with uh, um, Mr. Or ex, ex chair <laughs> Wetton. And I've almost nominated, volunteered him, <laughs> our new Commissioner Ang. But of course, you know, it's totally, uh, you know, you want to pick something that you're interested and passionate about. Um, and I do want to just specifically, obviously, we'll reassign and, and, and get people on subcommittees uh, probably at the next meeting. But I do want to mention about the subcommittee, you know, we were right in the middle of a super important BIS uh, safety audit. 
and we lost the um, the school wellness um, uh, employee who was so um, helpful for this. And then Lisha May was going to stand in for him and she just left. So I'm very concerned about um, seeing this project through and, and where does that leave us, you know, at this time, I'm sure you're short staffed, but I don't want this to fall through the cracks. Uh, Mr. Wong. Yes, I'm sorry. You, you did send an email on that. We have, uh, this my got us in contact with the person at the, uh, Growing Game School District that we will try to work with and uh, in agreement with uh, former uh, Commissioner Wetton that we want to be able to get this in. So it's, uh, I think the biggest one is uh, something, uh, the, uh, the routing of traffic or somehow the, the, how kids are arriving to school, having that, having that nailed down so they can implement. But again, we have to, the school district's critical in that because they're the ones that have to staff anything and they they have a way that they want. So we, we'll definitely have to work with them. We will, we'll, city will drive it by bringing up to them and then trying to get that information on their website so that parents have a resource to go. And, and many of the schools do have, I know for a fact that uh, Hoover does, uh, McKinley does, um, and I believe Roosevelt, that they have an a, uh, uh, they won't call it that, but, you know, a route to school where the drop-offs occur and how it's supposed to occur. Well, um, I just want to be, I want to be sure that the school district doesn't just one-sidedly decide how things were, are going to play because this was a, you know, a group effort with many voices heard and we were still hammering out some of the fine and, and very important details, but I think all that effort and expertise would be lost if we just said, okay, here you go. It's up to the school district. The teaspoon committee has always been involved in helping to refine and, and sort of determine what we th think might be the best plan with input from the schools. But I don't want, I, I would really hate to have this project sort of turned over to, to them, fake complete kind of thing. The, the route, that's what I meant. Some of the projects we've all, I mean, some of the work, uh, Sergeant Perna, we've already, there was the, 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 the truck that was there that was creating a, an issue with it. That's, that's been removed. Uh, as you'll find um, upcoming, when we talk about future agenda items, we'll be bringing some stop signs to you that we've done an evaluation on. And some of those are in that area. So some of those things will be put in play. So we're, we're hitting off the list, but the bigger one will be how, how the circulation. And that's the one we need to work with the school just because they, their parents have to buy into it. Right. So, but I, I didn't mean for it to be, they're not driving everything. We will continue, but they have to have input on that one. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ng, I see your hands up. Go ahead. So, uh, Commissioner Israel, I don't think I have to twist my arm at all. Like, this was uh, certainly something that I had soft circled as, you know, an initiative that I want to get certainly involved in in 2022, and you know, we can discuss that at a later date. But look, um, uh, as a Mr. Wong, um, so Lincoln also has a route, a specific route for school hours and things like that. But um, so again, I've got a kid in one, I've got a kid in the other one, and I live right on Balboa. So I also see the traffic that goes down Davis. I see the hellish intersection that I wanted, that was certainly concerned about is California and Ray. Um, you know, even if it's a certain, even in the incident that was listed in November, if that was just somebody who, you know, kind of collapsed in the street or whatever, um, you know, whatever the deal is, but there are certainly times in broad daylight on weekdays, on weekends, during school drop-off and pickup where people just aren't paying attention. There's people turning on to El Camino without looking the other way. There's people from El Camino that just plow right through the intersection as well. So, you know, certainly these are areas that I'm going to have an acute interest in, um, but you know, again, knowing where the traffic issues are just you know, completely congested at BIS, I, you know, along with this, you know, with this commission, I'm certainly going to keep a close eye on, you know, how we resolve this because it's, again, more people in the area, um, you know, people just trying to get to and fro a little bit quicker than they probably should be, uh, not really considering kind of their surroundings. So, you know, it, it, it's upon us to figure out the, the best we can find what's forward. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ring. All right, uh, we have citywide transportation alternatives. Commissioner Rebelos, committee of one. So, <laughs> exactly. 
I don't know where to go with this going forward, I, frankly. Um, I welcome uh, 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 committee members, uh, volunteers. I would love to uh, carry this on. We had some, we, we championed some great ideas and, and it's right in my wheelhouse. I, I mean, it's what I do is alternative transportation, transportation, micro mobility, um, public transportation. These are, these are my, um, this is my space. So I'd love to uh, carry that committee forward uh, if someone would like to uh, join with me. Was that another committee with Commissioner Wetton? That's correct. It was his committee <laughs> when I when I All right. was uh, nominated to the TSP. Yeah, we, we'll you know we'll look at all these committees again, and, and if we want to continue with the same committees, that's fine. I, I don't think we should have too many committees, but right now we have five, um, and we'll have that discussion next month on which committees we want to carry forward in 2022 for much more um, focused attention uh, on the issues. And uh, if there if there are new ones that we want to add to the list and maybe take something off the list. So um, we'll have to figure out how to staff them as well. So volunteers for those. Uh, the last one is the, the community BPAC and that's Commissioner Lee and Commissioner Rebelos. Rebelos. Either one of you two want to share? Uh, I don't have an update. I did not attend today's meeting. I did attend today. Um, they were going over the, um, just a year. It was like a year wrap up meeting today. And it was a year ago, just about that we, the Teaspoon and the BPAC did adopt the bicycle pedestrian plan for the city. It took much longer than a year and a lot of hard work by the engineering department and by BPAC and lots of feedback to develop the plan. And I'm hoping that um, Mr. Wong mentioned that you had the B, the bicycle pedestrian plan and that chair, Martos had it. Would we be able to get copies also of it? Because I think it'd be very good. You don't have to read it all, <laughs> but at least to see what is the priority for bicycle pedestrian. We talk a lot about bicycle pedestrian, like this tonight we had three pedestrians hit. So it's, a, and they get injured far more than people being in their metal vehicles. So anyway, would we be able to get copies of the bike pedestrian plan so that our commissioners might, when they have, when they can't sleep, <laughs> want to read and see what are the priorities in the plan and why was it even necessary to have a plan? A lot of people, going back to what Commissioner Revelo says, a lot of people think, you know, Burlingame, it's a sleepy town, it's quiet, but things have changed since the 50s and our engineering must change with it um you know pedestrian bike safety it's the three e's engineering enforcement and education and we are the engineering wing of it and um to see what items the BPAC has put in uh for what areas to focus on and what should be done so they talked about that wrapping it up they said they were really pleased with the projects that this staff came up with for the bike, bicycle lanes on True Sale for the um, grants to work with Milbray on that. They were really happy about that. Um, and we are starting to see a lot more high visibility crosswalks in town. So we're happy about that. But, you know, there's also a long way to go um, to become more progressive and to look at all modes of transportation not everywhere, not everywhere do you have to look as carefully, but around the school, around the train stations in the five pedestrian bike zones that we outlined in the plan. So anyway, it was just a wrap up and wrapping up the year. So thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Lee. All right, and that concludes item eight, brings us to 
item nine future agenda items next month we will go through our our ranking prioritizing of projects for 2022 i i hear everyone's concern i, I share your concerns bring those concerns next month and um you know we'll make a list and sometimes we had 15 items on the list um, discussion topics and uh We'll prioritize those things. We have a method of doing that. From one of our previous commissioners. So we have a way to prioritize things. Um, and then we'll talk about committees as well and which committees we want to continue forward with, how we want to staff those committees, you know, what um, more of a, a um, scope of work for those committees um, so that they stay focused on particular subject areas. Um, so those will be the main topics of discussions next month. Mr. Wong, do you think that we'll have time to discuss something else on the agenda? And do you have something queued up for next month? Yeah, I think something we wanted to show to you, show you was the, uh, the work on the bicycle boulevards. Okay. And, and give you an opportunity to at least, uh, get, get a feel of what those are. There's some options to go through the our design teams come up with some of them vary from what we've what we've shown right we, we're going to throw all the options out there whether and parking may or may not be involved in some of them so i'd like to share that with you so that might be one thing we're putting on there uh but again i think the other uh, stuff you had on there was and maybe we, we punt these but proclamations if you wanted right them. and then in the upcoming months, we'll be bringing you, again, a batch of stop signs, some already in, but uh, we might be able to just push that one off a little bit for the following month. But uh, we have a couple items. So do you think, I know when we talked about proclamation, this brewer had a template or something, do you think that we could get a proclamation ready for both Commissioner Wetton and Commissioner Bush by next month's meeting? Uh, potentially. I know we had discussions that you maybe wanted to separate when they occurred, but we, 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 we might be able to throw it together. I'll, I'll check with this brewer. Okay. It goes. Okay. Commissioners, what do you, what do you think? I mean, you, you know, Commissioner Wetton and um, those of you that were, well, I, did anybody work with Commissioner Bush or was it just Commissioner Israel and myself? Yeah, just us two. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Lee. I worked with him on VPAC. Remember, I was um, ah, on yes. So I'm not a newbie. I've been here a year and <laughs> I was on VPAC. I'm not a newbie here. That's <laughs> right. No, I, and he's great. They're both great. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, putting together a proclamation, should do you feel that we should have them in separate months? Um, I don't want to take away thunder from either one of them. Or do you feel that? Uh, Let's just do them both next month and um, honor them both at the same time. Any thoughts? I see a yes on honor at the same time. Commissioner Israel. Well, as I recall, that that meeting is always a very long one yeah. um, where we are doing our priorities and we're already tacking on. This is just my what I would think. We're already tacking on also discussing reorganizing the subcommittees and maybe even, you know, reforming them. I mean, it might be worthwhile postponing the um, proclamations to the February meeting. Um, but, you know, if you want to do it in January, that's fine. It's just, I just want to point out that that's oftentimes one of our longer meetings to start with. So. Okay. Um, what do you think, Mr. Wong? Uh, that's an excellent suggestion because usually on this one, uh, it's the one meeting I think maybe we help out Sergeant Perna and maybe let his item go a little earlier. So yeah, it's not uh, it, it does go it historically it's gone on a little longer, and it just depends on how everyone sees everything. All right, so what we'll do then? So we'll begin working on the proclamation, and those of you that that work with Commissioner Wetton or Commissioner Bush. Um, we'll look for feedback. Actually, I think Commissioner Ng, you worked with 
Commissioner Wetton on the Bond Oversight Committee. Am I right? Uh, I still do. Yes. So he still uh, sits still on do. that okay. uh, committee. Um, so some few anecdotal a... sort of thing, comments about Commissioner Wetton. It's not at all serious uh, what we put in those proclamations. But um, so I think everyone can contribute. Yes. Uh, yeah, why don't we uh, go, go ahead and do that and just start sending myself and Ms. Brewer yeah. items that we'll attach to that proclamation. And we can we can send send out a, a sample one that we've used previously so everyone kind of gets the flavor of what how it goes and yep. So okay. We, we'll do that. We'll try to get that out. So we'll look at February then to honor both of those former commissioners. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, so th <laughs> thank you for the intriguing meeting tonight. I, I appreciate everyone's passion. Thank you for your confidence in me to be chair next year and trustee vice chair at my side, Commissioner Israel Litt. Um, we look forward to working with this group in, in this next um, calendar year and, and doing great things for our city. We do have a lot of challenges, um, but I think, um, you know, good vibrant, passionate discussions about how we can best address those things um, is going to be uh, something that, um, you know, everyone's going to benefit from. So I look forward to it. Um, anything else anyone wants to add? Happy holidays, yeah. everybody. Happy holidays. Um, probably won't see you until yes. 2022. So happy holidays and all of that good cheer. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Lee. Yes, I'm going to be on vacation. I'll be in Hawaii next January. So I'm going to try to make a meeting. I don't know how much. I don't know what I'm doing that day. But I'll at least try to stop in and work on the subcommittees and prioritizing. Um, I'll do my best to get okay. there. No gear. Thank you. And happy okay, holidays, good. everybody. You too. Commissioner Rebelos. Yes, and in the holiday spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm looking forward to the new year, as I think uh, many of us are, once again. And I'm looking forward to working with everyone here. And I congratulate you, Chair Martos and Vice Chair Israelit, and welcome new Commissioner Eng. And I want to express my appreciation to everyone involved. I think everyone involved here, uh, no matter how passionate my comments, I think everyone here loves Burlingame and wants what's best for everyone. So I hope no one takes offense to anything I say. I'm just trying to move the ball forward as I think we all are uh, in the best way we know how. And with that, I wish everyone a happy holiday and I'm looking forward to next year. And I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate having you as a commissioner. Commissioner Ng. Feedback, your first meeting. You know, my first meeting went four hours when I first joined. We talked today the parking garage. It was the first time we talked about the parking garage, and there were 65 people in the council chambers, and we went for four hours. And the kid, they they were they were joking with me, said that's just normal, normal four-hour meetings. Um, but Commissioner, <laughs> what'd you think of our first meeting? Uh, well, uh, from a relative speaking perspective, then you know I certainly appreciate that this one was quite a bit easier than uh, your first foray. But um, <laughs> look, I uh, similarly clearly we're all very passionate about it um, and, and the way that we go about this. And you know, the one thing I, I, I take away is that you know we all really care. Um, yeah. and I think as long as we yeah. can have respectful discussion and exchanging of ideas, we're gonna we're gonna get places here. So um, I, I do appreciate the unfiltered views, um, particularly when you know things strike a chord with us, and I think that's that's normal, and that's what we should expect of each other. So, uh, look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to working with you all in the new year. I'm obviously, excited to uh, to be a part of this uh, and and see what we can take it. Absolutely, thank you. All right, Sergeant Perna and Ms. Brewer, happy holidays to you and everyone else. And with that, I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you guys. Happy holidays to you guys. Happy well. holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Okay. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.